blessed child. Thank you for joining me today. If you're new here, hi, welcome to the family, of course. And if you are a returning subscriber, I am so glad and excited for you to join me today. Come on, grab your coffee, grab a tea, something to snack on. Let us enjoy this time in the presence of God because I do have really a special word for you. So let's get right into it. So getting straight into the message, um, as I was praying some time, I, I kind of felt like the Lord impressed on my heart to talk about this. I, and I was like, I really don't know why I didn't know how I was going to relay this message, but he knows best. So and it's all about, it's the season to get filled up, like get your oil, get your oil. It's the season not to slack, not to back down, not to get lazy but get your oil and we are going to get our reference from matthew chapter 25 from verses 1 up to all the way to 13. the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom now five of them were wise and five were foolish those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps but while the bridegroom was delayed they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish say to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our, our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And, the, and as the door was shut, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say unto you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day know the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. The very first time I was reading this parable, um, of course, I had so many questions, right? And of course, as you keep having questions like, you know, the Holy Spirit keeps downloading his answers down unto you. First of all, which bridegroom shows up at midnight? We are so accustomed to weddings being between two and probably you'll be having the reception at about five. So what kind of wedding where the bridegroom shows up at midnight? right but this is like an unto the kingdom of heaven like you know what time the groom should be there you know what time the groom should be at the church waiting for his bride so in that way it's like we um the way the holy spirit laid this down for me is that it's like we want to articulate or give god a time for him to show up and as these girls were waiting and they waited, they, they got tired of waiting and they slept off. And guess what? The bridegroom showed up and announced at midnight. And that, and in, like, in likeness, that's how the, our Lord and Savior is going to show up. And announced, like, you do not know when or how or what time he's going to show up. You thought he was going to show up today. You thought he was going to show up tomorrow. You thought he was going to show up at 2 p.m., 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And as you are waiting, you get tired of waiting and then you slumber into sleep. And then he shows up at the time you least expected, midnight. Midnight. Everybody started by midnight. You're tired at midnight, you're, you're asleep. And that's when, uh, that's when he shows up. What is the message? What is God trying to portray? That he will not come at the time that you think he's going to come. He will not come at the time you assume he's going to He's not going to come at your own convenience. He's not going to come at your timetable. He's not going to come when you think you are ready for him. He's going to come in his own time when he says, I am ready to show up. But the question remains, are you ready when he shows up? Are you ready? And we have the likeness of 10 virgins. We have five foolish ones and five wise so in ones. The likeness of oil. I have, um, you know, what's the point in time when I just, when I had just bought my first car, 
and I had no at the time I had no knowledge about cars don't judge me <laughs> I had no knowledge about cars right so I drove my car around for like the first four months I had no idea that I was such a girl like so <laughs> I drove my car for the first four months I I didn't take it for service and sometime as I'm driving on the highway my light engine goes off and as it's going off like you know as it's going off I begin um, questioning myself why is the light engine going off and then smoke comes right out of the car so I was forced to park on the on the roadside and call you know roadside assistance like my car just broke down and when they came over to give me assistance they let me know that my my it like my engine had like blown up you know because there was no water there was no service there was no oil like there was nothing so they told my car up until my the place up until my place of residence and luckily enough the gas station was right opposite my you know my my house and when I took the car the next day they didn't let me know that yeah you are so lucky that you know you were literally able to get off the highway road or the or the car was able to signal in time and mark you this was like an old car this was a used car um so well long story short the car was serviced and then that in that in that niche of a time that's when i learned that your car needs to be serviced my car had no oil so it could not go a long distance it could not go farther that it was already burnt out it was already used up that all that i found when i was buying the car is the same oil that i was running on up until the car said i'm giving up i haven't been serviced i haven't been filled up i haven't been checked on and i'm giving up this is this is it this is it for me so in that time when i was reading this story the holy spirit took me back to that very moment in time and and he likened me that we are like the five like at the time i was like the five foolish virgins like what are the chances that yes you, you give your life to christ yes you're working you are walking in salvation you know and you are running on old oil you are no you are running on old oil and that oil has already run out you need to be refreshed you need to seek new oil you need to buy new oil get close to the father and get new oil you know you cannot keep running on empty you cannot run on empty what what you collected yesterday is eventually going to run out it's the same thing when we eat food you know you cannot run on an empty stomach unless otherwise if you're fasting or for or you are intentionally keeping away from food but if you're not like you cannot function properly unless you eat some food you nourish your body with food with all the right nutrients in order for you to keep you know moving forward if you don't eat you will not function properly in the same way the spiritual sense we are supposed to get the oil get the nourishment the oil of joy the oil of peace the oil of love the oil of hope the oil of encouragement the oil of self-control the oil of good service the oil of good works the oil of helps and we cannot get this unless we abide in the father jesus christ said in in his word outside of him we cannot do nothing we cannot do anything but when we are when we abide in him then then we can be able to do all that he has called us into then we are able to bear fruit but apart from him outside of him we cannot bear fruit apart from him we cannot do much why why would be risk why would we risk being like the five foolish virgins who did not go out to seek their oil and then they slumbered oh my god the bridegroom is like taking forever they probably thought that he was going to show up at two or three or four or five you know just like some christians are walking around today thinking that okay i have enough oil to run me for today but you you need to store up oil for the future because you do not know when or how or where he is going to show up he will show up unexpected this could be the midnight hour when you are least expecting him when you do not have enough oil for you and guess what you're not going to run to somebody who already has their oil collected up for them for the five wise girls who collected up their oil it takes sacrifice okay of course they had to spare time to go and to go to the shops buy this oil you know put it in extra vessels have it be carried to the venue 
where the gospel, where the the bridegroom was going to find them. In the same sense, nobody is going to collect that oil for you. Get to the throne of grace by yourself. No one will repent for you. The most I can do for you is I can pray for you, but I cannot reach the throne of grace for you. If you get what I'm saying, like I can intercede for you, but you need to have your own intimate relationship with the father. You have your own issues. I have my own issues. Only you can express yourself to the father the way that you can. Only you know what you need and he knows what you need. What kind of oil? Not every car gets the same kind of oil, right? Some cars take diesel. Other cars take petroleum. God knows what kind of oil that you need. You may need the you may need to you may need the oil of kindness, and you want to feed off of my oil. Having to cultivate or get your own oil, it takes sacrifice. You have to give in time, time to buy that oil, time to get that oil, time to seek your father, time to get to know whatever he needs from you in such a time as this, in this season, at this time. What is the oil that's needed for you? What kind of oil does the father have to give you? you are you about to run empty? Are you, around, are you about to run empty? You need to fill up on the oil. You need the oil of joy. You need the oil of love. You need the oil of, of, of helps. You need the oil of every good thing that the kingdom has to offer. And no, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot duplicate your oil from somebody who has taken their time and sacrificed their time to get their own oil. To get to the father to fill them up this is something that you have to do on your own so this is the time i feel like this is the time that god's calling us back to him he's calling us back to the basics of get your oil this is the season to fill up your vessels this is the time to fill up your vessels if you've been running on empty fill up keep filling up keep filling up because you do not know what time the groom is coming you thought he was coming at 2 p.m you thought he was coming at 3 or 4 or 5 but guess what he disappointed you he showed up at midnight what if he shows up when you're ready to run out what if he shows up when you don't have enough on you what if he shows up when you have nothing to show for it and you know what he's gonna say he said that uh, and it's funny that in verses 13 he says that watch therefore for you'd know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You do not know that. You need to get oil. And when the foolish girls run out to buy some oil, they showed up way too late. And the groom closed the door in their face. He said, I do not know you. Depart from me. What if, picture this in the mind. What if he shows up? And then that's when you start panicking like, oh my God, oh my God, I did not forgive. Oh my God, I still have all this resentment build up. Oh my God, I haven't prayed in like such a long time. Oh my God, I haven't like. And that's when it will click like you haven't literally had or spent any time building an intimacy, building a relationship, building, getting to know your father, getting to know your purpose, getting to know his will for you in such a time as this. And when the father does show up, and when that time comes and he does show up, that won't be the time to get no oil. It will be too late. That's when he says, depart from me. I do not know you. You didn't seek me. You were so busy. What were you doing? Were you busy taking care of life? I know. The f I know. We're all busy. The distractions are way too many. But he's just asking for your time he's just asking for you to sacrifice and give him your time fill up you cannot run on empty fill up before it's too late so and as i'm telling you this it's bouncing back on me as well that's how i know that's how i know that it wasn't for me so as i'm telling you I'm talking to myself as well. He's saying, fill up. This is the season to get your oil before the time runs up. Time is not promised to any man. You're here today. 
What could happen tomorrow? We don't know. Time is not promised to any man. This is the time. What are you using your time for? Get rid of the, get rid of the distractions. Collect the oil while you still have the time. Because when the time is up, they are locking the, they are shutting the door in your face. This is the time to collect the oil. I'm talking to you. This is the time and the season to get the oil. And one more last thing. As you get that oil, you want to be, you want to be watchful and prayerful. Because the five wise girls, they did not know either. They slumbered the same time with the foolish ones. But at least they slumbered prepared. They slept off prepared. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Let's get wise in this season. Get rid of all the extra baggage. Get rid of all the unforgiveness, of all the bitterness. Get rid of the gossip. Get rid of the slander. Get rid of all the unnecessary stuff and fill up on the good oil. Don't be like the five foolish virgins who went ahead and slept knowing that they were gonna run empty. But the wise ones stored enough for them. And they run to the wise ones, help us with your oil. I cannot help you with my oil. I did my own sacrifice. I sacrificed my time. I sought my father. I sought my father. I cannot seek him for you. You have to know him for yourself. You have to know what it is that he requires of you in this season. You have to know your purpose. What have you been called to do? If he's going to show up and he's coming for his bride, is his bride ready? If you're not ready, you're going to be thrown out. And I'm talking to myself as well. Like, I'm checking myself, like, pretty much all the time. So, <laughs> and as we've taken time off, you know, in the season of, in the month of January, I know, uh, like, a lot of churches have taken time off to fast and pray. And one of the things that the Lord highlighted for me was my use of time. My use of time. It was like, girl, you're throwing away so much time doing the unnecessary. Throw away all the distractions. This is the time to get your oil. It's not the time to be gossiping. It's not the time to be slandering. It's not the time to be funny. It's not the time. It's the time to get right. It's the time to get your oil. It's the time. Collect that oil. You cannot run on empty. If you run on empty, you are going to collapse. If you run on empty, you're going to crash. So that was the word for today. I'm sorry. Um, it wasn't, there was no drama, no skit, no play. <laughs> but that's what I was given to like deliver. And that's the message that I was given to y'all to say. And if it's thrown some light your way, um, if you feel the same conviction, you know, say something, you know, give me a comment back, say something and do not forget to, you know, share with somebody, um, like, and if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscription button and the bell notification. So every time there is an upload, you are the very first to know, uh, it was such a pleasure. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed child. So that was it for today. And I will surely see you next time. And I know you're going to make it. I love you all.